Hi guys, this is Johnny Bergen with another Chicago Blues guitar lesson. Um, I've done a lot of things that are kind of off the beaten track for a while, and I decided to uh, go back to some blues standards, and uh, what better one to start with than farther up the road. Most people don't call it that, but that's actually the uh, title of the 45 on uh, Duke Records by Bobby Blue Bland. And, um, this is a great place to learn a lot of principles. And it's a, this is, if you're going to learn this song, you should start with the original. And uh, because there's, it's an amazing performance. It hasn't been topped, even though it's been covered by a million people. So uh, it's an F. Now, there's some question as to who played on it. Um, people say when Wayne Bennett, Mel Brown. Um, there's a book. I'll put it in the notes where uh, Bobby Bland states it's Pat Hare, who was also part of the whole Memphis gang at the time. And, you know, that makes sense, too. And anyway, it's just some fascinating stuff. It's, some, it's a great guitar solo and great guitar parts. So let's talk about it. Now, it starts out with this kind of upstroke. So it's got this great intro, and it also does that at the outro. So this is an up, an upstroke. You can probably hear my foot. What I always say is imagine a string between your foot, tapping your foot real strong, and your hand. This actually works in the rhythm part. It's not the rhythm part on this record, but if you're at a blues jam and you're playing this, which is a pretty common potential scenario this is a good part to play again you got to just imagine that string between your foot and your hand I'm just playing a straight up F chord but let's get back to the actual you know the actual tune and what happens um, usually people do this but on the record you hear this Notice there's basically no vibrato almost in the entire song. Almost. Just a little bit here and there. But there's a lot of really slanky tugs. Maybe not that hard this early on, this much of a tug. But there's a tug to make it. It's not this. Hear how kind of lifeless that sounded? So let's try this. Now, if you're wondering what that is, this is an F, so this is an F. This is like a D minor shape. I always like relating things back to the original chord shapes that you learned. I mean, that's really all you need to know to like benefit something from these videos is, you know, what are your basic chord shapes? E, G, C, E, A, D minor, D, and so on. So if you take that D minor shape, move it up here, where your third fingers on the sixth fret of the B string, then that's your root. And you play out of that. Now we're going to come back to that, okay? So file that away if you didn't know that. Hear how that big pronounced tug? Really gives it a period. Follow up the road. Now, there's no real rhythm guitar per se in this, but I would just latch on to what the piano is doing. And it's like a lump. But you think about it like a lump, but it's here. It's the same thing that's in You're So Fine by Little Walter. And you might see a little bit of an expansion of it. Again, this goes back to a concept that I've talked about a lot, which is... It's like kind of squeezing the ball. You're, you're loosening your tension on the left hand and putting it back down. I'm not that wasn't perfect explained. You uh, sort of release your hand off the string a little bit to kill the sound. You can get a perfectly good mute with just your left hand. I think it sounds better this way. Let's try this. 
come on the B string and the B string. You can finger the that sort of back and forth thing with your. Th so this is part of your. Uh, let's try that again. <laughs> I'm, I'm in the middle of your F chord, second fret, first fret, right? And then third fret, third fret. Now I'm muting here too, but you got to make it feel like you're walking down the street. You can use your left hand to clip it off, or your right hand, or both. Notice how when you do this, then you're right out of a the four chord, B flat ninth. That's just one and one, three and three. Sometimes you sometimes I just hear the five. But sometimes I hear the five and then the one. So I'm gonna leave that up to you. So there's your rhythm part basically. Outside of the intro. The intro is an upstroke with that lick and the outro. So now the real magic, you know, I waited a while and got through the the basics before I, I got to the, the good stuff, which is the uh all that amazing lead guitar, you know. And the real trick here is to be a little bit behind the beat. And uh, and sort of take your time and listen to the vocals. I would even imagine, I would even, one great way to practice this would be to tape record yourself singing it as best as you can. So you could come in and out. And then during the solo, they just switch places. It's so cool. So there's a little trill there. That's a little too much reverb. there I, even less less you could do the better but a, there's a nice tug there and then he goes you can play here too So you're probably wondering what that was. So I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll talk about the fills a, a little bit. Farther up the road. He does a little wicked vibrato right there on the four. So this is all right out of... third finger. If you could do this and this. And he sort of resolves there. And then on the four he goes or there's a roll here. And feel free to just be creative with that. I mean I don't you can hunt them all down. All the I'm just telling you where it's at. There, so there's rolls here. And notice it's not a full bend. It's not that. It's just a tug up. Roll. That's third fret and third fret on the G and B D strings. So anyway, let's say we got through all that and we're getting to the solo. Notice how there's a stop there before he sort of launches, and then he launches and Bobby Bland does that screaming thing. Oh, baby. It's 
That's so exciting. Try it with no vibrato, it's really great. Think about this as a four, well, it is your four chord. Think about it as a B seventh, like this. Right, all the way up here on the 13th, 15th, 13th, 15th. You don't have to play it, you just have to think. And a little tug here, right? And then he's right back. If you had to learn one lick, this might be it. I'm gonna do it real slow. I'm using my pinky. Use your pinky, use your third finger, it doesn't matter. A little tug there. This is the fourth fret. First, that's on the E string, so roll. And then you do a bend, not a full bend, it's everything's like a half bend. There's no full bends in this whole song. It's not it's like this. Just a little bend. And then an unbend, just play it straight. So here's what we just played. So after you do this, which is 16, 15, and 13, and then 15 and 13 on the G string. And then he wraps it up, ending on a seventh chord. Beautiful, man. That's like a period to that thought. And now we're going into the five. And I know I got the very last part of that wrong. Um, <clears throat> I might even edit this video to fix that, but I really pretty much got through. I'm gonna do the whole thing slow, okay? You know what's really cool is if you could play with the dynamics here, start a little quiet and get bigger and bigger, okay? Oh yeah. Hear the big tug there? And then four. I'm just playing both strings here, okay? And it sounds a little meatier and me a little a little tougher, you know. And so then you do get that tug here. And then you got both strings. It makes it a little more aggressive, you know. So the trick is to be a little bit behind the beat on this if you can. You know, I love that video of Barney Kessel where he talks about the bead is like sitting on a chair. You can sit way on top of the chair. You can sit right dead in the middle of the chair. Or you can sort of lay back. So let's lay back, okay? And like do it this way. That's like kind of the Texas shuffle, right? I'm really taking my time. You can play this here on the 11th fret too if you want on the E string. I'm laying back. I love the way he ends on the F note even though you're on the 5. It sounds so good there for some reason. Um, that was kind of a surprise. He didn't do this. You know, he did this. basically how it goes and then you're back to the do it here if you want to. if you're the only guitar player if it's a trio or something it makes more sense to do it here in the middle of the guitar so have fun with this song and I do drop me a line I mean I just looked at Wikipedia as to who played it 
and there's one source where Bobby Bland says it was Pat Hare. You know, feel free to correct me. I have made plenty of mistakes, factual errors. Either way, it's one of the biggest blues songs of all time. It's really good to master the original and get the principles together of this playing behind the beat, of this don't vibrato everything to death, of the back and forth with the singer, which is so engaging. It just sounds like they could do that for hours and it would just be so pleasant to listen to. Um, that's just kind of the magic of, of this. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of good principles to this song. So, you know, if you have some stories about Bobby Bland, Wayne Bennett, Mel Brown, um, this song, um, you know, drop me, put it in the comments and, uh, you know, don't be a stranger. And thanks for watching. Do subscribe to this YouTube channel. Bye-bye.